CBS News special correspondent James Brown sat down with author Joe Pozanansky. They talked about his new book, The Baseball 100, which is published by Simon & Schuster, a division of Viacom CBS. Here's some of that conversation. The book is entitled The Baseball 100 by acclaimed writer Joe Pozanansky. Thrilled to have him with us today. This is the story of why I love baseball. And I can tell it through the 100 greatest players in baseball history. And of course, the countdown is what people want to talk about, want to argue about. How could you put this guy here and that guy there? And I love that. That's that's fun. It's a part of sports. It's a part of life. I love that. And baseball more, I think more than any other sport, embraces its history, loves the history of the game. And I really try to tell the story, not only of what made these players great, but why they made baseball great. As you well know, baseball perhaps is the most statistics driven of all of our sports. And many people will hang on their list, if you will, strictly by the numbers. You have enriched it by telling the rich story around each player and the era and the leagues that they played in. I love the fact that you even made the effort to um, talk about the value of the Negro Leagues and the Japanese League players. Talk about how you went through that process, Joe. When Jackie Robinson played for the Dodgers in 1947 as the first in the modern era, shortly after that, within 10 years of that, Roy Campanella played in the major leagues. Willie Mays played in the major leagues. Minnie Minoso played in the major leagues. Henry Aaron played in the major leagues. Ernie Banks played in the major leagues. Frank Robinson played in the major leagues. Roberto Clemente played in the major leagues. On and on. Not just great players, but truly top 50 all-time players. The, the best of the best of the best in a very short period of time. If that happened within a few years of Jackie Robinson coming into the major leagues, how good were the players before Jackie Robinson? Mm -hmm. How good were the players from 1937 and 1927? How good was Oscar Charleston? And obviously Josh Gibson and Satchel Paige, who we know all about. How good were these players? And the answer to me is even better than we think. So very important for me to tell those stories. Very important for me to put those players where they belong. You mentioned the Japanese league as well. There is a Japanese player in here as well. And I think that's something that's pretty obvious to us all now as we've watched Shohei Otani, we watch Ishiro, we realize how incredible those players are. So uh, I think I feel very good about having Satahara O uh, on my list who had spent his entire career in, in Japan. Put the stardom of Hank Greenberg in context for us. Hank Greenberg was the first great Jewish player in the major leagues in the 1930s when everything was building in Nazi Germany before the war. And America was a, was really teetering at that point. Mm. Uh, there was, there was some real anti-Semitism floating everywhere. You turned. I, what I love about him is the same thing I love about what Jackie Robinson did and what Willie Mays did, what Roberto Clemente did they opened eyes. At that time, there was a very strong opinion in the United States what a Jewish person was. And here was Hank Greenberg hitting home runs and, and being this, this larger than life figure. And, you know, it, it's not a direct change, but people see him in a different way, in the same way that, that seeing Jackie Robinson on the field allowed people to see him in a different way. What these players did for America is is really, really powerful and touching. And, and Hank Greenberg did that, you know, in the 1930s, you know, leading up to, to the horrors of, uh, of World War II. Put all of this in the context of today's game. And let me just uh, drill specifically on this. When I watch what's taking place in the postseason, very personal to me. Uh, I happen to be, I love to tease my wife, wanted me to retire this expression. I said, honey, I am literally and figuratively a minority owner of the Washington Nationals, but mine was more specifically in terms of the size of the investment. But I think back to all of the managers that they had, and Dusty Baker was one of them. Yes. And here's the guy who is dyed in the wool, a baseball man. And it's amazing when you look at his baseball career, how he was at the heart of everything. You know, he was on deck 
when Henry Aaron hit the home run to break Babe Ruth's record. He was, he probably did the first high five. His whole career is this incredible baseball story. So I could not be happier for him to see him here in the World Series. I think he's a Hall of Famer anyway, no matter mm -hmm. what happens this year. And if they do win, uh, nobody will be happy. I think a whole country will be really, really happy for Dusty Baker.